captain is waiting for you downstairs with me. We gonna go downstairs and see Donnelly or what? They're waiting down in tech services, Phelps. This is outrageous. Is somebody going to tell us what the hell is going on? Boys, come on in. Phelps, have you met Finnis Brown? Pleased to meet you, sir. This information is confidential and doesn't leave this room. The new letter was left in the back seat of a cab. The driver thinks it was put through the window and not left by a customer. We're checking all the spares back 24 hours regardless. Good. Like the previous letters, it's been assembled from headlines and type from the Times and Examiner, then glued to an envelope. What is the other note? This one? That's also new. A poem, hand-typed. Do you mind if I take a look? Go ahead. We've been over both documents pretty carefully. They've been wiped with gasoline, so there's no chance of prints. That's the message from the Celine Henry case. Keep upon thy soul by virtue of this curse. That's why we called you in. Do you think it's original? Not unless he's a genius. You like this nut job's poem? No, I like Shelley. It was written at least 100 years ago. Shelley? Sure, I knew that. You see, Finnis? I told you this lad was a bright boy. Sure, but what has it got to do with the case? Prometheus Unbound. Prometheus was a titan. A superhuman character who defied the gods to bring fire to humanity. The Dahlia guy believes he's Superman. Your guess is as good as mine. One thing for sure is that he's educated. What about the link to the Henry case? He could have got the wording from the papers. As you said, he is fiendishly clever and takes pleasure in taunting us. What's happening with the Maldonado case? We have the husband in custody. We haven't interviewed him yet. Went upstairs then, lads, and see if we can break him. My wife is so dumb, she stares at orange juice for hours. Well, it does say concentrate on the cartons. Yeah, the bum took a swipe at me. Put him down with my sap. Isn't he the cop who won a medal and is solving all the cases? Improved your attitude, Angel? What do you want me to say? I was with Antonia the night she died, but she left the apartment, and that was the last time I saw her. So your wife paid you a visit last night. What time was that? Late, around midnight, maybe. She didn't stay long. You're lying, Angel. You went after her. I think you killed her. You're out of your mind. My brother will tell you I was at home. We have a witness who confirms that you were arguing, that your wife ran out, that you followed her, and didn't come back. I know this looks bad, but it's not true. We argued, all right, but she went out, and I went out after her, and she jumped in a car on the corner. There was a car waiting for her? Can you describe the driver? Not the driver. It was too dark. But the car, it was a brown Ford Coupe. When we found your wife, her jewelry had been removed. Was she wearing her religious medallion last night? Sure. She always wore that. What about the charm bracelet? Was she wearing that? 
You know about that? She never wore it. She didn't like the message. She kept it locked up in that box of hers. You and your wife weren't getting along. She was divorcing you. Is that why you killed her? We fought, yeah, but we weren't getting a divorce. I don't believe you, Angel. She'd been granted a decree nice side. She pushed you too far and you lashed out. I told you. I wouldn't accept a divorce. The judge had set a date. You were going to be paraded in front of the whole city for your cruelty to her, Angel. Antonia. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> she came in drunk, out of her mind. She doesn't normally drink. She was looking around in her bag. Said she wanted to serve me papers. Me, her own husband. So I slapped her down. She ran out. That's the truth. What size shoe do you wear, Angel? Size 8. What difference does that make? Your wife has been brutally murdered. So how do you explain your shirt being covered in blood? You found that? I cut myself shaving. Angel, I'm not going to waste any more time on this. Give me something or I'm going to have you charged. My brother, Hippolito, he said some bad things about Antonia last night. So I had to sock him one. We got into it. Keep talking. She said she came from the El Dorado bar. And? It's not one of my places. We used to buy fruit at the market down the street. But the creep there was always running his eyes all over my wife. What's the name of this fruit market? Just picked fruit. Ord Street downtown. One last question, Angel. Do the words kiss the blood mean anything to you? No. Sounds sick to me. You're not in the clear by any means, Angel. You're going back into a cell. You should think about whether you have anything else you need to share with us. You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? What's your read on Maldonado? I still like him for it. Seriously, that line about the guy at the fruit market making eyes at his woman? Please. We'll get to the market and the guy behind the counter will tell us he saw Angel drag his old lady off into the night. This case will be shut like all the others. Sir, I'm de- Wait, you look familiar. Hey, from the bar, right? What brings you here? LAPD, Detective Phelps and Galloway. Clem Feeney, what can I do for you? Did you happen to see a young woman last night? 21 years old, Hispanic? Sure, she came by last night, why do you ask? She was wearing a necklace? I didn't notice. You weren't paying attention, Feeney? Hey, you're getting the wrong idea. Exactly how much fruit do you sell here after midnight, Clem? Uh, look, not much. I sell the odd bottle on the side to the after-hours crowd. Well, I don't want any trouble. I'm just trying to make a buck. The young lady 
Arrived around midnight? Yeah, something like that. Used the phone for a cab and then left. You already knew Mrs. Maldonado, didn't you, Clem? Sure, I met her before. Now she seemed like a nice lady. Her husband went apeshit one day when he caught me talking to her. She hadn't been back until last night. Where did she go from here? She wanted a cab, but I couldn't get her one. I was about to offer to drive her, but a car pulled up and she got into that. Can you describe the car? Brown Ford Coupe, I think. She seemed to know the guy. Do you mind if we look around? Why would you want to do that? Because we say so. I guess you can. Don't you have to get a court order or something? I have rights. Clem? Shh. No wonder he stays open late at night. People have to get their vitamins. Check through this stuff before we get back out there. So what are we hiding in here? This thing needs a combination. someone who was already dead it's a typical power thing once the stiff is dead the creep usually feels they can do whatever they like must have seen it during the war This fruit stall punk gets about 10 seconds to explain before I pull his fucking arms off. Clem! God damn it, get after him, Cole! I'll try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. Hit him, Cole. Spin him out. We should have grabbed him when we had the chance, Phelps. When we had the chance, we didn't know he was our guy. Strange that he'd leave a trail of blood right back to his own market. Maybe he wanted to be caught. A lot of them do. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. It's almost too perfect, isn't it? There's no such thing as too perfect. Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. I'll try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck.
You're a sick man, Clem. You need help. Outstanding job on this case, gentlemen. The poor woman can now rest in peace. I'll pay the fiend a personal visit myself and remind them that crime in this city does not go unpunished. When they finish with him at the receiving hospital, we'll have him up before the grand jury. I have a meeting this afternoon with the mayor, lads. I'll be sure to mention your names. Now, on your way. Why are the guys giving it to the doggies? They're riding in trucks, numbskull, while you're marching. They look pretty badly beat up. Yeah, they do it then. Scuttlebutt says it's pretty hard going down south. Yeah, we'll find out soon enough. Recon always leads. How can we fail, Skip, with the shadow leading the show? What the fuck is a shadow? Lieutenant Phelps, the shadow of death. What the fuck are you talking about? He's a quiet fucker, Sarge. You never hear the bastard coming. You sit in there, field stripping a cigarette, and suddenly he's there looking down on you. Why do you think we keep saluting that Jap loving son of a bitch? He's bad juju. That's enough out of you three! Bad juju? Where were you dragged up? A swamp? Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. Now, the fresh business. Galloway and Phelps, the task is at hand. The address is on the hill, north downtown off Fremont Avenue. Skipper, is the new letter genuine? Now, boys, we all know how many imbeciles have confessed in the short case. Ray Pinker will let us know in good time. We got a stakeout down on second later tonight. A fine morning indeed. We keep locking them up, but the bodies keep piling up. Yeah, California's love a fad, Phelps. As long as the bricks hold up in San Quentin, there'll always be killers in this town to say. Greetings from sunny California. When's it gonna stop? First the letter, and now another body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests on your record are giving you a reputation. You don't want them turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows maketh the man, Phelps. You can't always hit home runs. Sometimes you just gotta make first mix. Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Seeing secure, the rest of the patrolmen are going door to door canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, Detective. This looks awfully familiar. 
I think that's the impression the boys from the Examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m. But it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Blunt force trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. Another day, another dollar. No drag marks. The killer was moving around, surveying the scene. driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. Not now, Phelps. Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Phelps, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt. Horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, detective? I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services, 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thank you. Can you keep things under control until Pinker and Carruthers finish up? 
Short and effective. We'll stay out of their way. Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? Some swell. No message. Excuse me? There was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last bodies had something written onto them. This one didn't. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as what I'm saying, right? Before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? At least the rain stopped. You can change back into those white bucks now. Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case, and one of your laundry labels came up. F-1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register, and you can take a look. You take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. You wrote the number down on that dress, is it there? Mrs. T. Terrelson, 43 Emerald Street, Westlake. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? I've got a feeling we're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic types show a particular disposition for this stuff. Hello? Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Terrelson? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Terrelson, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think this that... procedure. You see to your girls.
Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. You want to hear something funny, Terrelson? Some bums think filling out a missing persons report actually rules them out as a suspect. It would take a smarter man than me to connect that. If you'd excuse me, ladies. So she went out without her handbag? She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. At least she was spared that particular indignity. match the impression to the crime scene. Lars was out in the rain last night. the ligature marks. I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. Hmm. Don't think this is any use to us. Check if she was a regular. For the record, Mr. Terrelson, what is your wife's name? Teresa. Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. I think you're lying, Lars. I think you were mad at your wife for embarrassing you in front of your friends. I think you came back here and strangled her and then dumped her body on the hill. You think I strangled my wife? How do you expect to prove that? Your wife was strangled with triple braid rope. The bowline from your boat is a perfect match. Look, I know this looks bad. I'm gonna have to come to terms with the fact that I let her go. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right, Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. 
She said she was bored and decided to leave. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. A bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin and calls me. I go and bring her home. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. Spill it, Terrelson. We like the look of you for this, so you better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30, maybe a little earlier. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. I paid the sitter and went to bed. You're lying, Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? And how do you figure that? You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <sighs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Charlson. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, if you give in to Braj, you'll be giving in to them your entire life. We could break the husband's story right now. Call in, get some uniforms dispatched to check out his alibi. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, badge twelve forty seven. How could I help, Detective? Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thanks for your help. Appreciate your time, sir. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? You believe this guy's story? Kind of rings true. Gents, drink? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. Yeah, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around, uh... 10.30, I think. On foot? In a car? By bus? How was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. 
God damn it all. I asked them to hold the mayo. Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here. But nothing to fit that description. The likelihood is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Benny. All right, two creeps were all over her. Promising to take her dancing. You get a good look at these guys? Sure. I got a good look. One of them was a sailor in uniform. His cap said, uh... USS Indiana. And the other man? The other guy is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. Red polo shirt. <laughs>